Riksgränsen is, is kind of like the birthplace for the free ride scene in Sweden. I really wanted to go here bad, like this is like the free ride mecca. Riksgränsen is one of those places that seemed to be unavoidable. It was a name you kept seeing. You started to really wonder what this place was about, what it was like. have big cliffs, big gaps, and a really long season where it's just slushy and the conditions are good for sending it. The reason for a lot of skiers to annually come back and come back and come back to Riksgränsen is because of, um, of course, the snow, the light and everything like that, but also you ski with uh, sometimes up to five different eras of skiers. You know, when I was a kid, that was the same. I can get up there and to see my, see my idols and try to ski with them, and it's the same, still the same. Being around in a gang, doing tricks under the chairlift, brings back memories from when I was a kid. Riksgränsen wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the iron ore in Kiruna and the ice-free harbor in Norwich. They actually needed a way to transport the iron from Sweden to the rest of the world. So they built uh, the railroad from Kiruna and they passed through Riksgränsen and we are straight on the border between Sweden and Norway. And of course the skiing scene wouldn't be the same if Jesper Rönnbeck didn't do the jump over the train station also. Free Radicals was basically the, the best free ride skiers in Sweden back then, forming a you know film crew, whatever, and, and progress the sport. With the Free Radicals, it was fun because you can ski every day with your best friends, and somebody recorded it. My buddy Jan Aikio had the chance to, to ride this massive quarter pipe. Ingmar Backman, the Swedish snowboarder, did a eight meter backside air, and he became the cover boy on pretty much every snowboard magazine. And Jan hit it, and that became the cover of Out Magazine. That changed everything. All in all, it was a pretty arresting image. It ended up being printed with the words, the next big thing between the skier and the deck. It sort of was like putting a stamp on a movement that hadn't even happened yet. And then J.P. Eau Claire and the new Canadian Air Force showed up in 1998. J.P. won the King of the Hill and that really put Rick Spencer on the world map. What's really cool here, and I haven't done it so many times, but it's the heli skiing. If you fly 30 minutes south, you end up on the highest peak in Sweden, and those mountains around there is good size, like it's really big faces. Yeah, so I think that's the coolest part by the, uh, about this resort is that it brings together the pros and the ski bumps and everybody in between to come and hang out and ski with each other. It gets pretty crazy here. You just have to be come up here and experience it. <laughs>